Good morning, Destiny Center. I'm Pastor Glenda Dubay, coming to you from Delta, British Columbia. And uh, I just, uh, I pray today that, uh, you know, God would just touch you in a special way. And, and I know that God is about to do some great things in this hour. Uh, I really believe that. And I kind of want to springboard off of last week's message about the power of the prayer of agreement. You know, um, one important thing to always ask ourselves is um, this in this different season that we're in and it was kind of interesting just stepping out the door the uh yesterday when it was so nice out later in the afternoon i just stepped out and you know there was just that smell in the air that we're just entering into uh our springtime you know it's it's here it's a new season and and so it is in the spiritual realm with all the things that have been going on we're in a new season and this is a season that's different than than what we've been enduring it's a season of war and you know um i guess the question i i you know we need to ask ourselves is that you know we need to stand in this hour stand for uh for the lord stand for our beliefs and and what uh, the word of god says but um as we try to stand against the forces like you know, I ask the question, can you stand in the, in the fire that you're calling down? Like, if we're going to stand for justice and righteousness, um, can we stand there without the um, enemy coming after us because of the, uh, the bends and the things in our life, the, the things that aren't lined up with God? Because uh, what really matters is, um, like I keep saying, is dealing with your own heart issues so that there's nothing that the enemy can come against you with. And there's nothing, you know, that would hinder your prayers, right? And nothing that would hinder uh, you standing. And um, like I touched on last week, you, you know, you can't expect victory in areas where you're not being, you know, obedient to the Lord. So, you know, if you're praying for prosperity and praying for your finances and praying for, you know, um, you know, your debt to be uh, taken care of and all this kind of thing, but you're not faithful in giving to the Lord, um, you can't really expect God to be moving on your behalf in that area either, right? So there's obedience that has to happen. Or, you know, if you're with a heart, you know, sitting with a heart of unforgiveness and resentment and anger and bitterness and all that, um, you know, you can't really expect God to be moving on your behalf because, you know, it doesn't line up with his word because his word says, if you don't forgive, he can't forgive. So just these things like this, these like, you know, I've preached many times, the little foxes that spoil the vine. And so I want to share some things this morning that I've learned that I've walked out uh, in my life, uh, in my walk with God. And, you know, when you're in a season of war, um, sometimes there's, there's different, there's not as many freedoms to do the things that you did in a time of peace. You know, uh, you have to be much more disciplined, don't you? And you have to be uh, ready for whatever is coming. And you need to be flexible and be able to be... Um, to be able to go and do, uh, you know, in a moment, uh, as God speaks to you. And, you know, it's a season that we've stepped into. And, you know, I believe we stepped into it last year, didn't we? And, you know, how do we live in such a time like this? Um, Ecclesiastes 3, if you read through it, you know, it, it specifically lays out the fact that there's seasons, there's times for different things to happen. In our life and in Ecclesiastes 3 8 it says there's a time of peace and a time for war and in a time of war you don't move the same as you move in the time of peace you our mindsets have to shift uh, to thinking differently and in a time of peace you know we're, we're more like pacifists you know and we enjoy life and we enjoy the way it's going and you know church you know sort of become a social club and it's kind of in, you know it's enjoyable and we you know have faith for for great things but in a time of war okay we have to be uh soldiers <laughs> you know we have to like the word says bring our bodies under subjection you know uh ephesians 6 says put on the full armor of god we need so that we can position ourselves and to advance the kingdom of god in a different way and so we're in a new season and you know i've read before or you know uh, out of timothy second timothy three um that you know and, and the word of god tells us that you know difficult times will come and you know not to be afraid of of challenging times because these challenging times are going to build our faith and when you read the Bible, there's not much, um, you know, talked about times of peace. 
we see usually uh, the Davids and the different ones going from the Elijahs and Elijahs. Uh, they're going from war to war to war, <laughs> aren't they? To have victory, victory, victory with the Lord. And, you know, most of the Bible was written in challenging times. You know, you think of, the, you know, Noah and Moses and Daniel and Joseph and Jeremiah. And, you know, even in the New Testament, you know, John the Baptist, you know, Jesus and the early church. Um, and none of these stories were written in times of peace. They were written in real challenging times. And so God does most of his significant work in challenging times. So I say position ourselves and be ready for God to use you in this hour, to be fully yielded. And we have to be filled, you know, filled fresh with the Holy Spirit. And, and it's easy to um, lean on what we know and even by faith kind of exercise what we know um but not really draw or you know draw or to be close to the person the holy spirit because we're kind of relying on our own abilities but it's time to really seek the lord for yourself now we got to kind of stop thinking out of our minds and what we know to do and what we're gifted to do and come into a fresh relationship with the Holy Spirit himself. And you know, I would give testimony of that in my own life just over these last couple of years because when you lose your spouse, you know, that's your confidence, that's your sounding board, that's the one that you become one with. And you lose that and you have to become, you know, one with the Lord yourself again. And it, it's a whole growing process into that place of totally and completely relying on the Holy Spirit. And you know, um, you do, you know, you do in your own life in a marriage too, but you know, uh, you also rely on your partner. And you know, when that partner's not there, you partner back with Holy Spirit in a way that he becomes your husband and you walk into a fresh relationship with the Holy Spirit. And you know, um, and it's time, you know, that we go before the Lord in, the, in this season, in this different season that we're in and um, get our hearts, you know, reset, you might say, right? You know, get back to the Lord. Don't rely on the gifts that he's given us or the understanding that we had for yesterday or, you know, even the experiences that we've had yesterday because we're entering into a new thing. You know, behold, I do a new thing, says the Lord. Do you not perceive it? You know, because we have to know, we have to see that God is about to do some amazing things. And whenever, you know, there is hardship or wherever the enemy is, or it looks uh, like everything around you is caving in, it's time to watch God uh, rise up. Amen. And so I'm just excited. I, you know, I hashtag everything. You know, the best is yet to come. And I truly believe that, that there is going to be a great manifestation of the glory of God in this day. And, and like in Daniel's day when, you know, him and his friends, you know, they wouldn't bow when they were thrown into the fire. Um, you know, that, that testimony, that was amazing testimony. And it was birthed in a, in a crazy, horrendous situation. Think about that, you know. They didn't even, you know, smell like smoke when they came out of the fire. And, and everybody was in awe. And everybody's eyes then turned to the Lord, didn't they? And so that was like, you know, a sign and a wonder. And when, you know... Um, Think about when Daniel gets thrown into the lion's den, the same thing. And, and, you know, we're in awe of those testimonies, even, you know, to this day. And, but I believe in this hour that there's going to be things that are going to happen that many generations are going to look back and say, be in awe of what has happened in our day. You know, God's going to use testimonies for his glory in this hour like never before, greater than we've, we've heard in the Bible. And I really believe that, you know, um, and so God has called me to uh, train and equip. And so I think I've, I've learned some things over, uh, you know, uh, 26 years of ministry and, and many more years of serving the Lord and, you know, um, 38 years of marriage and four daughters and business and five grandkids and, you know, traveling to different nations and international ministry. Um, you tend to get tried and tested, okay? over the years and you gain some valuable wisdom as God transforms you, as you yield your heart to God and he transforms you into his image. And one really important issue that I wanna talk about this morning is the issue of, of what kind of uh, fruit is evident in your life. You know, um, and let me list a few, you know, because if you're seeing some of these things, um, I want you to pay attention. 
Amen. Because uh, here's a few things, you know, uh, are you seeing uh, uh, overeating or drinking or drugs or sex or you can't hear God's voice or maybe you have suicidal thoughts or even attempts or maybe you've got uncontrolled anger or tears or broken relationships or chronic illnesses, itises, diseases, loneliness, anxiety, depression. Maybe you can't read the Bible. You try, you just open it, it just doesn't, you know, or maybe you can't worship. There's some people that just can't even worship. You know, um, maybe you're dealing with that unforgiveness or resentment or offense in your heart, you know. And I, I want to think, you know, if these things are popping up their heads, um, I think of, you know, that game that you play at the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the fairs, you know, where you take your club and you're hitting the gopher heads down, you know, and the minute you get one down, another one pops up. And, you know, those are some of the things that, that God wants you to get free from, you know, because one thing I've seen over the years is that, um, is a trap is the evil reports and trouble that they can cause if we don't know what to do with an evil report. And uh, I'm going to deal with some things this morning that are going to help you, um, I, I believe, become strong in the Lord and ready for whatever is coming. You know, and as a good soldier, we need to discipline ourselves and train and equip ourselves so that we can stand ready. You know, we are of a different spirit than the world, aren't we? But our old sin nature needs discipline. It needs discipline every day. You know, God says his mercies are new every morning. You know, great is his faithfulness. And, um, you know, if it's the, the truth that sets us free, then it's the lies of the enemy that hold us captive, isn't it? And so it's time to break out of that captivity so that we can stand for the Lord without any blame, shame, or guilt. And then when we are in that position, we have full authority to declare and decree and watch God go to work on our behalf. And so, you know, I just say, don't fear. Don't fear when you see things happen in this season that we're in. Don't, you know, sit around waiting for things to get back to normal, you know, because they may never. And, you know, because God is, is stirring up our faith and he's stirring up our expectation for what is coming. And so this morning we're going to look at some um, some proverbs even that give us great instruction, some things that will give us some great instruction to help us in this day, you know. And so when we talk about evil reports, you know, what causes conflicts in families or in churches or in organizations, you know, workplaces, whatever, um, to rise up out of control and cause division like what causes that and you know what causes friendships to be broken and you know um, when you know neither one neither party offended each other or what um, why when when um, Christians try to reconcile that you know sometimes they just can never reconcile and I think one of the main causes is that we don't have the right response to evil reports you know um, and we can say, I think 100%, all of us could say in this hour, that there's a lot of evil reports flying around about us in every way, shape, and form. I mean, the media, um, the social media that we have now from every avenue, um, the news, the media, the, everything is just, we're just barraged, aren't we? And every report just seems to be um, sometimes worse and worse, you know? And so what do we do with these evil reports? Um, an evil report involves a distortion of facts, an incomplete facts, false information, or true information told to the wrong person or persons. So that's really important because um, evil reports are so destructive that they can, they can destroy um, relationships. And God is all about relationship, isn't he? And over the years, I've seen many people um, backslide even because of the offense that they have taken within their heart. You know, Proverbs 16, 28 says, a whisperer separates the best of friends. And so we can look at, uh, you know, we could even look at, there's so many examples throughout the word of God. Um, if you have a moment, go read 2 Samuel 15. You know, it's a classic example of an evil report and how it destroyed, you know, it just is destructive. You know, it's David's own son, Absalom, turns on him, rebels, and, and was conspiring to steal the kingdom, um, steal the throne from him. 
And so you can see, you know, that they're um, all through the word of God, you see um, how to deal with these evil reports. You know, there's stages of defilement. You know, in, in the medical world, um, there's stages, you know, in a disease, in a defilement of a disease on how it takes hold, right? And in the same way, there's stages in um, a spiritually healthy person who is contaminated by an evil report. And so the first one is, is ignorance, okay? Um, and doesn't, you know, it means that someone just doesn't know um, how to um, prevent getting contaminated, right? So they just have their ear open to hear anything that, that comes along. Um, the second thing is exposure, you know, um, being exposed to somebody that is infected with an evil report. You know, how many times have you come away from someone and go, ooh, I just feel like I've been slimed, you know? It's like they just are so negative and just so, you know, there's just nothing good coming out of them. And the next uh, level is contamination by, you know, allowing the, the those germs, you might say, to enter you. And now they're inside of you. And then the fourth level is infection because the germs now... Um, start to work within you. In other words, now you've taken on a secondhand offense. And then the, then you, you become a carrier, like you have the disease and you're defiled. And that's when um, a disease actually begins to destroy uh, the vital functions of your body. And it's, so it is with an offense or unforgiveness in your heart. It begins to destroy uh, your spiritual walk. And so you know, um, let's look at ignorance for a moment because, you know, ignorance is, is, is not being aware of, of a destructive power or not being aware of distorted words or speaking to the wrong person. And, you know, when James 3, 6 instructs us, it says the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. It defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire by hell. And, you know, um, Proverbs 17, 9 says, He who covers a transgression seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates the best of friends. Matthew 15, 10 and 11, it says, Hear and understand not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth defiles a man. And so what, what uh, makes up an evil report, you know? Um, you'd have to say it's um, an unauthorized, distorted, or false report um, that can influence someone that's hearing it to form a bad opinion about someone or something. And um, how are evil reports given? You know, they, they can be subtle or they can be obvious, can't they? They can be... Um, from just quiet or they can be angry or they can be sweet or they can be bitter they can be deceptive in other words right i mean they can come through words they can come through facial expressions they can come through gestures and they can come through um just um the tone of your voice <laughs> right and so um giving and and receiving evil reports is the flesh okay it, it's a fallen nature i would say of every person you know, um, Psalm 41, 7, it says a whisperer is one who secretly or privately passes on evil reports to others. And then we look at gossip. What is gossip? It's one who magnifies and sensationalizes rumors or partial information. Oh, how dangerous is that, right? A slanderer is one who, who tries to um, discredit someone else's reputation um, with damaging facts or, or suspicions, right? And tries to put all the suspicion out there and, and cause people to really uh, wonder what's going on. And, you know, that, that word slanderer actually is used in the Bible. And it comes from the word diablos or devil in Numbers 14.36. And then there is the one who is um, a busybody. Okay, how many of you know someone that is a busybody 
who literally goes around trying to cause a problem, digging up evil reports and makes it their business to spread them around, okay? And uh, and that's a, a real, you know, it's listed in the sins along with, you know, murder and stealing. You know, think about that. Gossip's listed right in there. And it's classic because God warns in 1 Peter 15, he says, let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, as a busybody in other men's matters. Okay, think about that. So it's listed right there with being a murderer or a thief. <laughs> okay, so God really wants to deal with these things in our heart, doesn't he? Um, you know, what What motivates? Um, I want us to look at James, if you have a moment, uh, if you have your Bible there. James 3, 14 to 18. Uh, it says, but if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So think about that, you know, there's, it talks about bitterness, you know, um, and bitterness usually is because you are reacting instead of responding because of the personal hurts within your own heart, okay? And then there's rebellion, and that's justifying your own independent spirit, right? That's when you move in rebellion. Deception, okay, believing the report is the right thing to give. You know how many people have gone around spreading something, believing, okay, that they're in the right to do that. Okay, that's deception. Uh, pride is when you're wanting to exalt yourself in this, right? And you want to put the other person down. Uh, guilt is justifying, you know, maybe your own past actions or whatever. And then envying is um, desiring what others have or to be what someone else is, okay? And God doesn't want us to do that either. You know, if he wanted us all the same and all to be, you know, then he wouldn't made us individuals, would he? <laughs> you know, he wouldn't have need of you if, you know, if you're the same as someone else. He didn't make us clones. And so um, we have to look at how how susceptible are we to evil reports? You know, our, our sin nature, okay? And our sin nature is pride, okay, full of pride. And God says he resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So as a Christian, as we want to move forward with God, we want to be in that humble state, right? That place where we say, God, you know, take these things from me that are not of you, uh, that are in the flesh in me, you know, and they, they continue to rise in us, even as long, you know, we may have walked with God for many, many years, but you know, it's a continual process of renewing our mind and getting ourselves right with God, amen, and, and staying in that place of, of um, being humble and coming before God and saying, help, you know? Um, so our sin nature, okay, the pride enjoys, okay, hearing um, from, uh, hearing these kind of things because it exalts us, doesn't it? So like when there's a bad report given or whatever, and these kind of evil reports, they bring down, they hurt people, and they may hurt people that we don't like. And so that may make us feel good, okay? So these are not good feelings to have, but our flesh likes it, right? And so when we're moving in the ignorance of not knowing what an evil report is, um, you know, that's how, how Satan uses an evil report, is to um, come in and, and, and cause Christians maybe to close off their spirit to one another or um, even in the workplace or whatever, just to like multiply, you know, conflicts and, and uh, produce even more um, problems and to um, maybe even get non-Christians just to, to mock Christianity and reject Christ. I mean, there's just the enemy just is always trying to stir things up, isn't he? And uh, the next thing we look at with an evil report is the exposure, okay? The exposure to it. What do we do with the exposure? You know, um, and we all, I mean, we're all talking to each other all the time, right? And so the exposure is entering into a conversation with a person that is a carrier of an evil report. 
you know, Proverbs 27, 12 says, A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. And so we have um, protective, you know, physical defenses to warn us about, you know, physical contamination because, you know, we have our senses, right? We can smell and we can see, we can taste, whatever. But sometimes we're, we're unaware until contamination is too late. And, and in the same way, God, he gives us these, these protective um, spiritual defenses, right, to warn us about spiritual contamination. And, you know, we get that kind of prompting. That's where we need our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Because the Holy Spirit, he begins to give us those warnings within us, right? That still small voice that says no, you know, or gives us that conviction or that check, you know? And the Holy Spirit, you know, we need to follow the warnings of God's word and obey the counsel because he's the, the Holy Spirit is our counselor. Amen? And he is our teacher. And sometimes we're... Uh, unaware of, of of getting contaminated until it's too late, and then we're like, oh, like what do I do with this? You know. So how do we how do we detect? Okay, a carrier of an evil report. How do we detect someone? You know, um, we usually test the spirit before giving the report, right? Like when someone is coming to you, have you ever had them come to you and kind of just like you know. Um, uh, just sort of start to talk to you and begin to just like kind of see where you're at. And if you're on the same page as them, then they, you know, spew everything out and you come in agreement with that. Right. And usually, um, the person will ask you about the opinion of, of someone else or whatever, and then drop that negative comment and kind of check out your response. And, you know, um, and you, or you often get to, um, get you to ask about, the person like because they're, they're making you curious about that person so then you ask about that person it's like they're throwing out as I would always say they're throwing out a line to catch a fish right and you know some of the things you know like have you heard about so and so or or I think you should know about this right and it's just all these kind of things and um and they might share something you know out of you know concern uh for the person but how do we respond to that, to an evil report? You know, I think the first thing we should say, you know, is like, why are you telling me this? <laughs> you know, why are you telling me this? Be part, um, you know, because we don't want to be part of that gossip. Um, because it only, you know, like I said last week about the power of coming in agreement. Well, we can come in agreement for good or for evil, can't we? And so there's power in agreement. We don't want to come into agreement with that kind of spirit, do we? And so... Um, or next question we ask is like, where did you get your information from? You know, is this credible? And if they refuse to, um, you know, identify the source, like, cause you know, uh, many times like, oh, I can't say, you know, is this no, you know, well then, you know, for sure, you know, it's a sign of an evil report, isn't it? And then the other question you could ask is, you know, can I quote you on this? Well, that usually scares people. <laughs> it quiets them down really fast. <laughs> and, um, but you know, our spirituality is not measured by how well we expose an offender, but how uh, effectively we can restore an offender. Amen? You know, Galatians 6.1, I think of that. You know, it says, Brethren, if a man or woman is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. So our whole main goal should be to um, cause restoration, not division. You know, Matthew 18, 15 to 17 says, If your brother uh, sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Okay, and if he hears you, you have won your brother. But if he will not hear you, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or more witnesses, every word may be established. And if he still refuses to hear, then you tell it to the church or tell it openly, right? But if he refuses to even hear the church, um, let him be like a heathen or a tax collector. I mean, um, so in other words, I mean, there's some people that are going to be restored and other people that are going to walk away. But if you go through this process in Matthew 18, this is, this is obeying the Lord, amen, in what we need to do. And in 1 Timothy 5.19, it says, Do not receive an accusation 
against an elder except from two or three witnesses. So an elder is, is someone older or senior or someone in the presbytery, you know, um, that's what it says in the Strong's Concordance. So in other words, someone in authority over you, you know, um, I just think of, you know, when we read Jude, um, it says, you know, Jude was warning God's people that there will always be those that try to distract God's people from their faith. And he warned all through the book of Jude, um, not to be part or participate with those kind of people. And then we see in 2 Peter 2, 9 to 17, you know, Peter, he warns of, of false teachers. And, um, you know, he warns that there's going to be uh, this deception, these evil reports. He warns of that. You know, ones that promise freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. You know, I always say, well, Beelzebub can't cast out Beelzebub. You know, and I think of, you know, what's rising up in this generation is just all these, you know, life coaches and all this positivity stuff and all this. Stuff. Well, I'm sorry, but you can't get free if you're not free yourself. <laughs> Amen. And to me, freedom is knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and knowing his word. That is what's bringing us to the truth. And when we know the truth, the truth will set us free. Amen. And so defilement is, is um, you know, the next stage, right? Um, so we've looked at, you know, you have ignorance, you have exposure, contamination, infection, and disease. And then there's, um, you come into a place of, of uh, defilement there that it says is receiving an evil report from another person and believing that it is true. Proverbs 26, 22. Okay, Proverbs is awesome. You know, if you need instruction for life, go to the book of Proverbs. You know, there's a proverb for every day. <laughs> you know, you just need to go and, you know, it says Proverbs 26, 22, it says the words of a talebearer are wounds. They go down into the innermost parts of the belly. And so a defilement is, is when we give in to the temptation of spreading an evil report. And then there's infection. You know, it's, it's responding to an evil report um, with our own, you know, understanding rather than um, God's way and in love. And that's what really matters because if we don't move in love, then we're just, what does it say in, in Corinthians? That we're just like a clanging gong, you know. Um, Proverbs 14, 15 says, The simple believes every word. But the prudent man considers well his steps. And then Proverbs 26, 21, it says, um, As charcoal is to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. Wow. So yeah, the book of Proverbs, you know, uh, there's a proverb for every day of the month. There's pro 31 proverbs. <laughs> a proverb a day <laughs> keeps the devil away. There you go. Um, symptoms of infection. Okay, what are some of the symptoms um, if you've been defiled by an evil report? Well, I guess the first thing looking at is, is if you believe that report is true. And then what happens is that you begin to form your own negative opinions based on that report. And that's when it gets dangerous because it's like our words are seeds. And so we're sowing seeds. And if you sow a bad seed about somebody into someone else, that person now is carrying a bad seed about that person. That person may get healed and restored and that's not even the situation anymore. But this person over here now has this bad seed. He still thinks badly of this person. Do you know what I mean? So it just, it sows discord, you know, um, and then we, yeah, we form that negative opinion based on, on the report. And uh, well, then we start to have um, accusation and we, we start to speculate about that person. Um, and if we don't have enough information, um, we just begin to assume. And just because you haven't um, received communication on a matter uh, doesn't allow you to speculate. You know, speculation is not... Uh, not where we want to do is it um 
just as it's uh, one person's responsibility to communicate, it's the other person's responsibility not to speculate. Uh, so if you need a communication or something, okay, one key thing is don't assume. And that word assume is, is quite an interesting word because when you break it up, uh, what assumption does, that word assume, it makes an ass out of you and me, <laughs> okay? Uh, when you break that word down. And it's absolutely true because you are you are assuming from a distance without all the information. And you know, even when we look in the Word of God, even the disciples missed it, you know, because they didn't have all the information and or they didn't understand. And so they would assume from a distance and had no idea. Like, you know, when Jesus said that they have to eat his flesh and drink his blood, you know, rather than ask what he meant by that, they just they just left him. You know, they had no clue. And so sometimes when we don't understand, we can get offended. And instead, instead of searching out a matter and, you know, finding out what really happened. Amen. And so this is a, a vital thing right here because there's been much destruction um, in relationships by this place of assumption. And, you know, Proverbs 25, 2 it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. And so we're to find out, you know, all the different sides of something, you know, which is really important. Uh, you know, so being exposed to an evil report is um, kind of like temptation, but defilement. And it's, it's giving into that temptation. And then it's focusing on the negative things in that person and... Um, and then it, you kind of, um, everything that person says, it just becomes more kind of uh, evidence. It kind of just builds on what the negativity that you already have. Do you know what I mean? It's because you've got those negative seeds within you because you've received that from someone else. And so those are, um, and then you begin to judge the person um, because you've got the negative seeds within you so you judge the person based on that on that evil report or you back away from that person because of the evil report um and then you can maybe you know some go ahead and tell that evil report to someone else and what happens with that you know i think of the game when you were little you know uh, we'd sit in a circle and we'd play this, you know, the game telephone and someone would start off telling something and tell it to the next and tell it to the next and tell it to the next and then we'd get to the last person and they would speak out what they heard and it was totally, it didn't even come close to what was said at the beginning. And this is what happens with evil reports. Someone will tell someone something and they tell the other person something and then more things are added and less things are, you know, and it just becomes so distorted and destructive that, you know, um, it's just, it's the enemy's way of causing havoc, isn't it? So defilement is, uh, it becomes a disease. It's, it's being um, mentally and emotionally controlled by an evil report and by that destructive spirit that gave it, you know. Um, Proverbs 17, 4 says, An evil doer gives heed to false lips. And so... You think about that, you know, like um, if we get diseased by this as a Christian, you know, we've we've literally grieved the Holy Spirit, haven't we? By taking up the offenses of other people or and or making them our own and adding to them, you know, um, Ephesians uh, 4, uh, 30. Let's go there if you've got the word of God there. Um, Ephesians 4 verse 30 and 32 30 to 32 it says and do not grieve the holy spirit of god by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption and it says let all bitterness wrath anger clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as god and christ forgave you you know and like i said earlier like the the power of agreement you know, it works for good and it works for evil. And so we need to really, really remember that. And, you know, I guess some of the, the symptoms of um, defilement are, you know, having that bitterness within your heart. 
And even though, and a secondhand offense sometimes is even harder to deal with because we've taken on opinions, we've taken on attitudes um, that don't even really directly offend us, but we've taken them on on behalf of someone else. And, you know, it sets us ourselves up to be judged over things that are, you know, God's responsibility. And, um, and then we try to, you know, bring others in agreement with us, right? And that's what that spirit does. It's just so dangerous. And um, we just don't want to, uh, to go there, do we? And so how do we cleanse ourselves, okay, from the infection of a defilement, of a of this disease of an evil report or maybe we have been one that's not just received but maybe we have been one that is actually spread an, an evil report how do we cleanse ourselves of that well the first thing we need to do is repent because this is not uh what god wants us to do is it this is not how god um responds to things you know, if we confess, it says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Second thing, really important. So get yourself in right standing with God to begin with, you know. Uh, let God, you know, in your heart and repent of these things. And second thing is pray for and bless, okay, the person that's being spoken against. You know, this can be hard if that person has genuinely hurt you or where there's a fence in your heart. This could be a hard thing to do, okay? Believe me, like I said, over many years of pastoring and many years in the ministry, um, I've had great opportunity to um, be offended. <laughs> great opportunity when there's great betrayal. And, you know, it's only, I always say, it's only the people that, that love you the most that can hurt you the most right and so you have to deal with these things when you when you're walking with god god doesn't give you an opportunity to to hold on to these he says he wants you to deal with them and not carry this in your heart or it's going to hurt you um just like a disease will begin to take over and you're going to be um you know it's it's going to hurt you it's going to harm you um you know luke 6 28 it says bless those who curse you and pray for those who spitefully use you. So if you've never done this before, sometimes, you know, in order to start doing this, you have to um, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Is this an easy thing? Absolutely not. Because that person may legitimately deserve judgment. But, you know, it's not up to us to do that. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. What is up to us to do is to bless those who curse us. Because I always say a curse is like a negative, okay, that's coming at you, a negative. When you bless, okay, so a negative is coming at you and you bless with a positive, it is going to cancel that curse out. And so bless those. And so you're going to have to maybe ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Pray. And to help you legitimately come to faith and actually believing um, that you can bless that person that spitefully used you, okay? That's a place where we have to really rely on the Holy Spirit to help us, right? Bless those that have been spoken, um, that have spoken against you. Uh, and you know what? Guess what? Holy Spirit can help us, believe me. Uh, maybe at first you may not feel like it okay your emotions are not lined up with your obedience to the word of god you know but soon your flesh will come into alignment you know there's um times when i've had to um you know uh just by faith say the holy spirit help me because i don't i don't feel like i can can pray this kind of prayer but i know you can help me and as i begin to pray it because i know i have to in obedience to the lord um it's not very long before the fact that I am genuinely praying for that person to get free. Amen. At first you want to see vengeance, but then it's like God turns your heart into that place of love. If you stay in obedience with God, uh, Romans 12, 14, it tells us also bless those who persecute you bless and do not curse. Okay, a curse is something, you know, our words are either blessings and cursings. And if we curse out of our mouth, it says a curse uh, without a cause shall not alight. In other words, if you are cursing, um, if you're blessing, okay, any curse that's coming at you can't land on you. Okay, so, um, but if you're cursing, right, um, 
no weapon formed against you shall prosper, it says in the word of God. But if you're a weapon formed against someone else, you're not going to prosper. You see what I mean? It works both ways, doesn't it? And so we don't want to be the one cursing because it is going to come around someone that's blessing you and come right back like a boomerang and hit you and, and pile the coals of fire upon your head. Amen. And we don't want that to, to happen. We want to obey the Lord before we come into a place where, you know, God begins to deal with us. Um, and then you know that you've been cleansed when, you know, you lose the urge to tell someone else the evil report. That's when you know that your heart has been cleansed. Because when we're full of an evil report and we're full of ourselves and we're full of offense, we just want to run and tell everybody else and get everybody else in agreement so that we can look good and then you know, the other person looks bad. And, and it's like, but when you get to that place where you lose the urge to tell someone else an evil report, you know that your heart is being cleansed. Amen. That the Lord has touched you in that place and he's forgiven you and, and you've been released of offense. And uh, when you get to that place where you grieve over the fact that that report was ever given, you know, you literally grieve over the fact that, you know, that that person's life is in destruction or, you, you know, you begin to just grieve over the fact that, you know, something, a relationship has been destroyed or whatever it is. And you truly begin to pray for restoration. That's when you know that you've been cleansed. And then also when you come to that place where you can truly love the person when you have a love for that person does that mean that you fully open and surrender and trust that person again? no but it means that the lord is giving you a love for them that you can pray for them to be restored amen and that's what god wants so that they could walk out their walk with god and then the other thing is is that um that when we know we've been cleansed, we come to that place of humility in our life where we uh, become really quick to examine our own life for failures. Amen? Instead of trying to take the log out of someone else's eye, we first examine ourselves, And that only comes from someone that's walking in humility. Amen? Because pride doesn't see what's in your own heart. Only the fact of um, humility will cause us to um, examine ourselves before we judge or criticize or, or give an evil report of someone else. And so I just pray this morning, you know, if you're hearing this and this has brought some um, clarity and maybe even conviction and, and some help to in this area, you know, maybe God is going to instruct you in some ways to, to maybe even reach out, um, you know, contact the person who gave the evil report and, and maybe... Um, you know, get more information on it. Maybe you need to do a Matthew 18 situation where you go to that person and uh, and if they don't listen, you take someone else and, and you bring it in to try to bring restoration, amen? Maybe there's a process that God is gonna have you walk through. And, um, and maybe there's other things that you need to do. Um, maybe you need to just, you know, speak the truth in love and, and maybe, um, you just, you know, I just know that God says that, that we cannot be easily offended, right? Love is not easily offended, is it? And, you know, um, when Galatians says, if a man or woman is overtaken in a trespass, you who are spiritual, it says, restore, uh, such as in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. And so, you know, none of us are, are um, going to avoid this in our walk with God, are we? And we, none of us are um, going to come out unscathed unless we continue to humble ourselves before the Lord. And finally, remember that, that um, like Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians 13, 4, and I'm just going to um, go there for a moment. Um, and this is uh, our love chapter here that uh, talks about what is, what is love, you know? And if we're really operating in the love of God, you know, these are some things that... Um, you know, love is. It says love suffers long and is kind. Okay, it does not envy. And it does not parade itself and is not puffed up. You see, that's pride right there. So if you're moving in pride and you think you're better than someone else, that's not love. It does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. Is not provoked or thinks no evil. Okay, so if we've had an evil report, you know, this is the thing. Are we thinking evil? You know, that's not moving in love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Amen? 
It bears all things and believes all things and hopes all things and endures all things. And love never fails. Okay, so there's the key. So when we move in the love of God, it will never fail. And I just want to say this morning, you know, I started out by saying, you know, can you identify some of these fruits in your life? And there's some things in your life that you could see, then you know that you're not rooted in the love of God. And when we're rooted in love, and we respond in love, you know, to say in these evil reports or whatever has happened, the godly fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control are going to manifest in our lives. Amen? And so I want to pray for you this morning. And uh, I just know that uh, every one of us in our daily life deals, okay, on a continuous basis with these kind of things. And so um, let's pray this morning. Father, I just, I thank you for your word. And I thank you, Lord, uh, that your word will not return to you void. And so, Father, for the wisdom out of the Proverbs uh, today uh, that you have shown us, I just thank you, God, that we would grab a hold of that, that we would bring it into our lives and into our heart, and that we would line up with those things, Father, and that we would not allow uh, the enemy to come in and to try to steal, kill, or destroy uh, anything in our lives. And Lord, I just pray right now, if anyone is um, seeing uh, any bad fruit in their life, any manifestation of um, anything in their life that is not of you, Father, that uh, they would first go to you, Father, with that repentive heart and say, God, and just lay it out before the Lord this morning. You know, lay it out before him and allow him to touch you in a way that maybe you've never been touched before and to deal with you first so that as God begins to just show you in his love and wraps his love round about you and the Holy Spirit leads and guides and directs you and gives you that wisdom you need, um, that you will walk uh, out of that place into uh, freedom, into that place, Lord, where we need to stand in this hour, uh, Lord, as we enter into this new season of being able to stand uh, firm in your justice and your righteousness and to pray and declare um, that we have the full authority that you have uh, caused us to walk in, Lord, with no blame, shame, or guilt being able to be thrown at us, Lord. There would be no toehold of the enemy that would try to come in and steal, kill, and destroy because we've allowed a root of bitterness or rebellion or or uh, gossip or, you know, tailbearing to enter into our life. And so, Lord, I just thank you today that you would touch us to that deep place. And, Lord, I just declare also restoration that we would be ones that would be for restoration, just like the Lord is. And we move in compassion to see restoration of relationships. Father, and I just declare that. I declare it especially over um, families. I just see a lot of families where there's just like uh, offense, unforgiveness. Uh, there's been, you know, ones that haven't talked to one another, ones that won't talk to one another, ones that have uh, just been separated by this whole area of, of evil report. And so, Lord, today I just, I bind that separation Separation right now and I loose upon them a uh, restoration that there would just be uh, great testimonies of the work that you're going to do in the hearts of each one listening today and I just thank you for that Lord in Jesus name may we be ready for what is coming amen the best is yet to come so I bless you today God bless you and uh, take this word, look these scriptures up and let it get into your heart and uh, get lined up with God and be ready for what's happening next. God bless you and have a wonderful week.